Exactly one year ago, I posted my very first video on this channel. And now exactly one year later, I have almost 200 public videos, nearly 800,000 total views, and over 3,000 subscribers. Not even close to 10 million, but hey, I mean, we're getting there. But in this video, I want to look back and see how much I've changed, because let me tell you, I've changed a lot. I mean, if you scroll through my shorts, you will see huge differences from videos that are just weeks apart from one another. So I want you guys to look back with me. So let's start from the beginning, shall we? But before we begin, I have a quick favor to ask you. Only 2% of you are subscribed, so please subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Okay, thanks. So I posted my first video exactly one year ago on July 3rd, 2023, and it would mark the start of this channel. The title of that short was What's the Best Color Set in Monopoly? And although it's pretty bad compared to how I make videos now, at the time, I was pretty happy with that short with it garnering over 300 views. And so I continued making these shorts, and for the following three weeks, I would be posting them on a daily basis. But wait, why shorts actually? Why not just regular videos? Well, in my opinion, shorts are a lot easier to get into and a lot more rewarding than making a long form videos, which for me was perfect because I have been diagnosed with ADD, which is like ADHD just without the hyperactivity part. It basically means I struggle with focusing on tasks, especially if they take a long time. But since shorts are easier to make, that problem is a lot easier to deal with. In fact, I could make shorts so fast, I would stockpile a bunch of them to the point I didn't have to make another short for three to four days before I ran out again. And so that's why I chose to do mainly shorts. And at the time, it was going good with the shorts averaging around a couple hundred views each. Now the topics varied a lot from short to short. Something that I kind of decided early on was that I was going to post whatever I wanted. Anything that I thought was interesting and could fit in the short, I was going to post. And so I made shorts about interesting facts, some of my own stories, interesting ideas I had, and some very sad attempts at rage bait. And that post whatever I want rule still kind of exists to this day, for better or for worse. Now, if you watch the shorts one by one, you can definitely see a steady progression in quality from all aspects. I slowly got more energetic while recording, I got better with cuts and edits, I improved my mic audio, my script slowly got better, little by little improvements. Now, I had some experience with video editing before, mainly with Windows Movie Maker, but I would say I had a good understanding of how to make quality videos. However, something that was just new to me was the fact that I was now using DaVinci Resolve, which by the way is a great editing software. Honestly, I highly recommend it. It is completely free, it has tons of free effects, it has just tons of things you can just learn to master over time. But learning DaVinci Resolve was definitely a huge part when it came to my YouTube journey. Now, so far I focused a lot on the shorts themselves, but something that really hit me in the feels were the comments. On almost each short, there were at least a few people saying I had potential, saying that I was underrated, saying that I might become a big YouTuber in the future, that I should push forward. And seeing those comments now almost gave me tears, like no joke. These people saw something in my videos and were like, this has the potential to become something big. And reading those words at the time was great. I mean, who doesn't like being told that? But now those comments mean a lot more to me. For the people who left those comments back then, I would like to sincerely thank you. And so in the first three weeks, I grew my channel to a total of 76 subscribers. But then something would happen that would change my channel forever. On July 16th, 2023, a group of shorts YouTubers start a multi-channel ARG dubbed The Shorts Wars. And it was huge. Like the people involved were some of the biggest shorts channels on YouTube, like Johnny Razor, Dan O'Cal Drawings, Royal Pear, Joe Kane, and a few others. It got so big that even MatPat covered it all. But wait, what does this ARG have anything to do with my channel? Well, it's safe to say that without the shorts wars, 
don't think I would be where I am today. Now, there were a bunch of channels at the time making videos covering the ARG, and those videos were getting tons and tons of views. And I saw this happening, and I was like, I want this too. So I also started making shorts covering the ARG. And let me tell you, I have never been more stressed doing anything else in my life. Like this ARG was the only thing on my mind for the entire duration of it. Every day I would not stop be checking YouTube for new codes, new links, new clues, and plopping whatever I found into a new short. Because I knew that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity for me that was already paying off. Each short got thousands of views, I was getting dozens to hundreds of new subscribers. I mean some of these shorts are still some of my most viewed shorts to this day with this one having over 60,000 and at the end of it all I had made 11 total shorts and had gone from 76 to over 1100 subscribers this was the biggest amount of growth I've had so far on this channel now if you look at the shorts that I made during that period you might notice that they look a little different from my regular ones and the reason why they look so different was because I was on vacation, which honestly was like the worst timing to ever exist. Like I posted my first short about the ARG and then realized, oh God, I have to go on this vacation with my parents. How am I gonna do this? Like this meant I couldn't physically record myself like usual and had to completely change my editing style. So I had to quickly learn new techniques to make the shorts still look appealing. Something I tried to do was using smooth zooms and pans to make it look more professional, but you can clearly see that I was struggling with those things because they were not smooth at all. About halfway, I also started using PNGs of myself as substitute for me not being able to record myself. It was not necessary, but I thought it would help people recognize my channel a lot easier. Like I made those right before we left by just taking pictures in different poses and then just going in an image editor and making these PNGs. It definitely was a weird time, but once that was over, I continued with my regular shorts. And let me tell you, my views dropped right back down. I went from a couple thousand back to a couple hundred views per short. I mean, I expected as much. Most of those views were because of the hype of the ARG, but it did still kind of suck, but whatever. Now, some Something that I had on my mind even before the ARG was slowing down my upload schedule to once every other day instead of daily. And I was doing this because not only was I getting tired, I was also scared that I would run out of ideas. Because let me tell you, I was running through ideas really quickly. I only had like 30 ideas ready at the time and I'm being able to stretch that from one month to two months worth of content was huge. So I took this one short every day schedule and that's been mostly prominent ever since. Now my shorts were still improving quality and especially Actually, my editing was getting better as I learned more on how to use DaVinci Resolve. I was slowly using more pictures and PNGs, more visual effects and sound effects. I got somewhat better with zooms and panning. I eventually started adding subtitles to my videos. And the overall pacing of my shorts were getting better and better. The quality of my shorts were continuing to grow and it reflected in the views as I was consistently getting around a thousand views or more. But there was something else I wanted to try as well. What if I could green screen myself and have a custom background instead of just this blue wall? Hey, wait a minute. This wall is one solid color, and it's not a color that I wear. This could be my green screen. Or in this case, technically a blue screen, but who the f cares? So I bought some new lighting in a brand new MacBook because the old one would legit just freeze if I used the green screen feature. And on September 22nd, 2023, I officially started using green screens in my editing. And then it all started to come together. My video started getting 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 9,000 views, and eventually 22,000 views. And we officially enter what I would like to call the golden age of my YouTube channel. I was now averaging around five to 10,000 views per short. I was getting dozens of new subscribers and in late November, I finally reached a total of 2,000 subscribers. And it just kept going. Some of my most popular shorts were from a Would You Rather series that almost always got 10 to 20,000 views each. However, I also tried doing skits, but realized that they were a lot harder to make than I thought they were. So I kind of just made one and didn't do one again. Shorts 
that's where season two also happened, and I tried getting into it, but honestly, I wasn't that interested this time around, so I only made a couple shorts about it before stopping. There was also this somewhat popular indie game at the time, I don't know if you've heard about it, it's called uh, Lethal Company. I always wanted to play it, and I saw a bunch of clips from it across YouTube, so after I came back from a two-week vacation, I started making my own Lethal Company clips for a while. At first, I only posted those clips, but eventually I started to mix my regular shorts with my Lethal Company clips. And although they were fun to make, and especially fun to record, they sadly didn't perform as well as my regular shorts. Also, all the gameplay footage started to take up like half my storage. So after a while, I stopped making them. I also tried to finally start live streaming. In early March, I was testing if my MacBook could actually handle a stream, and surprisingly, it could, but only for smaller games like Lethal Company and Monopoly. And even then, it was kinda wonky. But after some preparations and a short announcing the stream, on April 13th, I had my first proper live stream. It was a challenge run of Buckshot Roulette, and it went all right, I think, anyway. Like, I'll admit, I was definitely trying a little too hard to engage with my viewers at the time, but it was still kind of fun, and you can find the stream in the live tab if you want to watch it. But after that stream, I didn't upload another short for like another two weeks. And the next short after that came only five days later, and then I just stopped posting. I just kind of left. And there were only a few reasons. Number one, I had final exams coming up soon, which means I was going to be busy studying for that. Which is kind of funny because I ended up not studying that much at all, so the reason was not that valid. Another reason was definitely that I was slowly getting tired. Even if making these shorts is much easier than making regular videos, they still take plenty of effort and over time I think that definitely chipped away at me. But the biggest reason why I stopped was because I just didn't have any ideas anymore. I just couldn't figure out what to make videos about. Which honestly doesn't really make sense, like how do you have no ideas? There must be something, right? And I don't know how to explain it either, but it was probably just a mix of tiredness and a lack of motivation. Which is actually something I think many aspiring YouTubers like me underestimate and struggle with a lot. And I am seeing a lot of small creators slowing down their uploads, taking breaks, or quitting due to the same reason. Motivation. Which I think for me has been the biggest problem when it comes to doing almost anything in my life. I have things I want to do, a bunch of things, but I just don't have the motivation for them. Even after I get myself to start doing it, I usually stop after experiencing even a little setback. But I've been trying to push through the mental barrier and continue doing the things that I want and like to do. But in this period of time, I was doing nothing. I was somewhat busy with my final exams, but for everything else, I was just doing nothing. I was thinking if I was ever going to upload again. Because I still wanted to do YouTube, but I just couldn't get myself to do it. But then, one day, I see that I have a notification on YouTube. Probably just some comment or reply. Nothing special. But this comment is actually the reason that I started uploading again. And it's from this user, at AJ Glockner. Hi, sorry for being absent for so long. I've been working on my own channel and it's been going really well. My old vids are blowing up overnight and I currently have 40 subs. I can't wait to watch another stream of yours. And this comment made me realize that there are some people who want to watch my content. Now you might be thinking, what do you mean? Plenty of people watch your content. I mean, look at your views. But it's like there's someone waiting for my content. I realized I wasn't just doing this for my own enjoyment and fulfillment. Someone else wanted to see what I made. Like, it's hard to explain, I'm sorry. But I read this comment and I was like, I need to start making videos again. And so on the 9th of May, 2024, I posted my very first short in a whole month. And it did pretty well, 8,000 views, not bad. But the quality of that short, oh boy. <laughs> Like, I went from a small creator with potential to a random wannabe TikTok vlogger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I don't know what to say here. I, I wouldn't say these are the worst in the world, but, like, some of these were definitely the weirdest things anyone has ever seen from me. Like, this one especially. I put zero effort into these shorts. Like, I did nothing. I 
didn't set up my lighting, I didn't make scripts for them, hell, I didn't even have my drip on. That's how lazy I was making these. And then out of nowhere, I was like, let me try to stream again. So on June 15th, I went live doing a Pokemon Platinum Nuzlocke. It was fun for me to stream, but I don't think many people actually enjoyed it. Because throughout almost the entire stream, I had background music playing while also having the game audio on. So you were hearing a mix of piano, jazz, and old Pokemon music. And only when I got to the first gym did I realize this mistake. Like, holy hell. I did make a few stream clips out of it that did all right, and I did try to stream again, but the game was lagging like crazy, so I eventually did not do it. And now, we're here. One year later. And my god, what a year it has been. I will be continuing posting shorts, so don't worry about that. I will be doing streams again in the future as well. I just need to get a better PC to handle it, so heads up for that. And hopefully I'll start uploading more long form videos. Please like and subscribe because at 10 million subscribers, I'll do a face reveal. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hello, this is editor Jack Doodley speaking. Uh, this video was uh, quite a big thing for me to make. Like, I severely underestimated at how long it would take for me to make this video. Like, I originally planned to post this on the 3rd of July, which was like, as of recording, five days ago. So yeah, uh, a little late, sorry for that. But in general, the channel has been back up and running, and it's been going pretty good. I also officially now have a Discord server set up, so there's gonna be a link in the description for that, and also on my channel uh, about section, you can also find the link to join the server. I will be active, of course, in the Discord server, as long as I'm, you know, active <laughs> if i remember to have my discord app open again thank you guys for watching and honestly for an amazing year and yeah that's about it see ya